Hi, welcome back to Perceive 2021. Today we have with us Chris Messier, a machine learning engineer at Clarify, and he's here to talk to us about getting started with software development for deep learning. And really it's about getting the most out of your Clarify API. Chris, take it away. Thank you so much, Pablo. Um, so like Pablo said, my name is Christopher Messier. I've been working with Clarify for almost two years now. Uh, I'm a machine learning engineer, but I work out of the field engineering team. So typically the work that I'm doing is having me integrate a lot of the Clarify platform with clients and customers and community members in order to get them to really get the most out of the Clarify platform and begin integrating it with into their own software stacks. Um, really the power of Clarify is enabling AI predictions and modeling uh, throughout the entire sort of software ecosystem. So being able to do that with the Clarify API provides a very simple way to integrate Clarify's advanced AI services directly into your own platform. Um, so to give a little bit of an outline, uh, what, we're, what I'm gonna be touching on today is mostly just how to get started with the API and covering a pretty standard use case when it comes to machine learning. So loading your data, training your model, and then generating predictions. Uh, this will give you a really great introduction to the API in general and enable you to, to really begin to get your feet wet and get started on more advanced applications within the, the Clarify platform and ecosystem. So really, I, my hope is that you'll take what you learn here and then develop something very interesting, very cool, very novel that is powered by Clarify, but is your own creation entirely. Okay, so um, to, to begin with the introduction, what I wanted to talk about here is just a little bit of a background on what the API is or what an API is in general. Um, if you're familiar with the Clarify platform, you're probably familiar with the portal view. Portal is our GUI platform, our graphical user interface to interact with the models, data, and different assets within the Clarify ecosystem. In order to do that though, you have to log onto your web browser, go into the page, and while it provides a very convenient way to do this for a lot of users, more advanced users will require a greater level of integration with their own systems. And in order to do that, we've provided an API with all of the same flexibility as the portal, as portal or graphic user interface, and extended it even further to allow you greater control of everything that you do within Clarify. So to begin, what is an API? An API is an application programmer interface so it really is just a way to provide advanced programmatic users ways to access the deeper functionality of a, of a system directly from their own programs and not having to go through an interface like a graphic uh, a GUI. Um, and really the best thing about this and the thing that I see the most when it comes to clients and customers is the flexibility that they get from the API enables them to do a lot of very impressive things with the Clarify platform beyond what we had initially intended with the design. So it, this is where you're really gonna get the most out of Clarify and get the most AI benefit into your system by using the, AI, the API. Okay, uh, in order to get started, what you'll need to do first is you'll need to create a Clarify account. Uh, so the way that you would do that is you would just log on to clarify.com uh, and, and it's logging into, it's essentially just creating an account like every other website. Um, once you do that, though, you will be able to access the API with the provided tokens. Um, so the way that we do it on the platform is you have a personal access token, which is a reference to you as a specific user, and then an API key that will come from an application, which connects to that specific application. What we're going to be using here is just the API key. So you'll be able to find this directly on an app application page. Uh, while going through the portal is sort of outside of the, the realm of this con of this talk, the documentation on docs.clarify.com provides a great example of walking through the portal and setting this up. So I recommend, highly recommend you uh, look through the documentation to follow along. Um, in, in addition, if you do look at the documentation, you'll provide it will provide a lot of great detail and technical information about the, the platform. So I highly recommend you just looking at it for advanced users and anyone that really wants to get the most out of Clarify. Now, what we have here is a little bit of a code snippet that shows the initial the initialization of the client. Now for this presentation, I've decided to focus specifically on the Python client. Uh, now Clarify does have a number of gRPC clients that we have released publicly so that you can interact with the platform through a number of different progr uh, pro programming languages uh, such as Java, JavaScript, Python, Go. 
uh, et cetera. So all of those will also be available on docs.clarify.com if you want to look at a specific language implementation. But due to the breadth and popularity of Python, I thought that this would be the best way forward. Now, on the right, what you'll see is what we're simply doing is importing a bunch of different objects that are required to work with the Clarify gRPC client. So that is the package Clarify underscore gRPC, which can just be installed through pip. Once again, instructions on docs.clarify.com. And once we do that, once we have that installed and brought in, what we do is we instantiate this channel object, which allows us to actually communicate with the platform, which we then pass into this stub object, which is what we will actually be using to uh, inter interface with it. So the channel sets up the connection, the stub sets up the interface, and the last line we have here, the metadata, this is just where we're setting up the authorization for you to actually interact with the platform through your, your account. Uh, once you have all this set up though, this, this will only need to be done once and you're able to interact with the client with, with, with the Clarify platform directly through the client and these objects that you've uh, set up. Now, once we have that initialization done, the real key thing is to turn to an actual use case. Now, as I, as I began to highlight earlier, the real use case that we're highlighting here is a very common one. Uh, it's simply going to be that you have a, a trove of data uh, in, director, in a directory structure. You have all these images, you wanna upload them to the platform, train a model, and then use that model to get predictions. Now, loading data is the best place to start for this, obviously, because you're gonna start with your data before you have your problem, presumably. Now, when you're collecting your data, you'll likely have it all contained within a single place on, on a local local computer or uh, maybe, a, maybe a cloud resource. But what you need to do in order to use Clarify is you need to get that data onto the Clarify platform. So that's what I'm gonna go through with this first step. Um, now, now, to highlight the use case a little bit more and to maybe, maybe underline why it is so important, really when it comes to any machine learning model, data is the most integral component. It's the most important part, you can't have a model without data. Um, this is also a frequent source of questions that I get from customers directly. A lot of people are uh, curious how they can best load their data to the platform to really leverage uh, Clarify's tools. And in order to do that, the best way is through the API. So this is the, the typical approach that I've, uh, that I've used for, for a lot of clients. And it's pretty common to a lot of computer vision problems. Um, now, the problem here is that the way that a lot of practitioners actually organize their computer vision data sets is just directly within a directory structure. So they're not stored on a database or on some sort of repository. Uh, they are just stored in the local file system. Now, the parent directory, which is often just the name of the data set, will contain subdirectories for the, the train, test, and validation splits. Um, if you are curious about what these splits are, I highly recommend just looking uh, into some additional resources on docs.clarify.com that go into the basics of machine learning. Now, once uh, within those separate split directories, there will often be separate subdirectories for each of the classes of the model. So you'll have that higher, higher level structure where you have the data, data set split and then each of the concepts that are particular to that model. So what we really wanna do is we wanna iterate through those subdirectories over all of the training split and then get all of those, those images loaded to the Clarify platform and tagged with the appropriate label. So in order to do this, what we're going to be doing is we're just gonna write a very quick script that uses the Clarify API in, uh, along with the local file system uh, package within Python uh, OS and actually go through, iterate through all of the images that we have and upload each of them to, to the Clarify platform. Uh, now there are a few best practices that I'm gonna sprinkle in throughout. So just uh, keep your ears out for those, but we will touch on one very quickly. So moving on, um, all, of the, all of the code examples will be available um, and we will include a link in the, in the description for this to where those can be found. However, um, what I'm just going to be showing here are simple code snippets. So I, I recommend looking at the full code if you have any further questions, um, but, but this will provide a good overview. So the way that I tend to approach a lot of uh, design problems is by modular, modularizing a lot of the functionality. So here, what we have in this function on the right 
is just a method that will actually stream your image directory to input. So you just want to return back each one of those inputs. Now, in order to do that, though, we need to convert them from a picture and on a, a file system, uh, an image file on your computer to an actual Clarify input. In order, to, in order to do that, though, we will need to begin to actually look at how to wrap things within the Clarify protos. And that can be seen in these two methods down here, make bytes image and make input, which we'll go into in further detail uh, on the next slides. But really the key structure here is we're just using this os.walk, which is just a recursive file uh, structure search. And then it will uh, yield each one of these input objects, which has associated with it the image and then the label for that image that corresponds to the correct class. Okay, so to, to look at the these different uh, little wrappers we have here, it's important that we go through each one to understand what each one is doing. Uh, to give a little bit of background though, in order to actually use an image for prediction, it has to be, or use an image for training, it has to be uploaded to the Clarify platform as an input object that says to the, the platform that this is a, val a valid input that can be used for the model and it has the associated information with it. So here, what we need to do first, we need to just convert it into an under a type of image that the platform understands. So to do that, we use this make bytes image method up at the top. Um, while the first part is pretty standard for a lot of Python programmers where you're just reading in the, the contents of a file, you're just converting that to file bytes and then passing that into this resources underscore pb2.image object. So that is the actual image proto for the, the proto that defines what an image object is in the Clarify platform, just wrapped in this, this convenient function where it's just gonna return that image object with the associated file bytes. From that, we can then begin to actually make the input. So an, an image is just an image. An input is where an image becomes data. So when we make an input, we're associating the image, the, the, the bytes that actually correspond to the pixels that are displayed to a concept, which is a semantic understanding of what that image represents, at least in terms of the, the concept space of our model. So what we're doing here is we're taking that image object, passing it into this make input method, and then we're wrapping it in this resources underscore pb2 dot input object, putting it into that resources underscore pb2 dot data object. So converting that image to data. And then the last thing here is that we're also making these concepts. Um, what you'll see is I, I used uh, just a, an args argument. So you could pass in a number of different, excuse me, a number of different concepts that could be used. And in order to do that, um, we just use that method down at, down at the bottom, make concept we're just gonna pass in the value and the concept that is to be used and then use the list, uh, list comprehension to just sort of build that list in the fly of concepts. So each of the inputs will have all of the applicable concepts associated with them, created into an input object, then uploaded. Now, like I said before, uh, I will be sprinkling in a little bit of best practices throughout this. And one of the best things you could do when working with the Clarify platform is begin to focus on sending in batches of data instead of just a single data object. So uh, what we're doing here is instead of looking at the individual inputs, I had created a, another method that will just return a fixed size batch. So instead of taking one input at a time, it will send back 16. Uh, it's just used to extend the, the method above. Um, the example code for that will be available in the repo. Um, now for this though, as we're iterating through that list of batches, the input batches at the top, um, what we're doing is we're looking to see if it is an input batch. Uh, this is a, a test that I put in due to a, a bug that I was hitting. Um, but, but aside from that, what we're doing the next is we're actually making our first API call. And that is in the stub.postinputs method or object down below. Now in that, you'll see the post inputs object contains a service underscore pb2 that post inputs request. So that post inputs object is saying, this is what the endpoint is that we're going to be using. 
and the request is the actual content of that message that's going to be sent to the platform. In this case, our post inputs request is going to have that input batch. So it's a collection of inputs that will all be sent up to the platform at the same time. Now, the reason that this is so advantageous is because our, our API is asynchronous and, and all the processing is not done uh, is, is not done sequentially. So if you're sending up a large batch of Im images at once, it's able to process them all sort of when resources become available and you're not sending one input up at a time. Um, but yeah, so, so as we're going through that, we're making each of these calls, sending up each one of those batches. And what you'll notice down below, um, apologies for flipping the screen back and forth. Um, what you'll notice down below is there's this other condition, if post inputs underscore response dot status code dot code uh, does not equal the status code, and it, the screen cuts off here, but it, status code underscore pv2 dot success. So it's basically just saying if the API call was not successful, I want you to raise this exception. Uh, so this is a very, a very useful test to just make sure that everything is working as expected as you send it to the platform. Okay, um, so now in, in, the pro in this process, we have our data, it's been uploaded in batches. We have all of these inputs now on the platform how do we actually begin to train the model? Now, it is very easy to go onto the, the Clarify portal and hit train, and then you just have a model. But you can actually remove the, the human interaction from that and just allow your computer, your scripts to, to train your models for you. Before we dive into how to actually train a model, it is important to really clarify the language around what a model is. Really, a, ma a model is a mathematical object that just outputs a prediction. Uh, simply put, it could just be any sort of input to output mapping. But in this case, what we're talking about when we're talking about a model is very specifically a machine learning model that is used for prediction, and in this case, over images. So it accepts it as an input and image, and it classifies that image based on the concepts that it's aware of. So in this case, we would be able to, we would be able to send in one of the images that we're that we're interested in, that we've collected uh, with our data set, and actually send that in and get one of the predictions out. Now, AI and machine learning is really the backbone of Clarify's platform. So you'll see models throughout the entire, the entire platform that solve a variety of different problems and can be used in a number of different use cases. Now, the important thing is, uh, apologies for the leaf blower. Uh, the important thing is a model is not functional unless it is trained. What Clarify is providing is really just the templates to train your models, but you provide the data, which actually makes your models understand the world and be able to provide value to you. So while there are a number of different problems, Clarify also offers a number of different templates and training strategies so you can actually get the best model for your specific use case. Now, when it comes to a general approach though, the typical way that we approach things at Clarify is through transfer learning. So this is a fast way of not having to train an entire model. We're just retraining the head of the model to fix the outputs. So we are using that in, in this case. It, it provides you the benefit of giving you a very fast trained model that is highly accurate. And we can look at that as we begin to go through the training. Okay, so with the training step, there are going to be three separate steps within this or sub steps. So the first is we're going to create our model or really check to see if our model exists. And if it doesn't, then create it. The next one would be training our model. So that's after our model is already in existence, we just want to say, take the data that we already have and train. Learn how to represent or learn how to recognize those concepts that we've told you about. The final step though, in any model training process is just evaluating the model. So Clarify does offer a number of internal tools that will automatically evaluate your model. So I'm going to show you how to use those in order to get results right away to see how accurate your models are. Okay, so as I said, the first step would be to just create the model. Um, I, I did mention briefly that we, we needed to check to see if the model existed. The reason that this is the case is if a model already exists and you try to create it, it will throw back an error. So if it's erroring out, it means that model is already there where you can catch that specifically. So in this call though, what we're doing is we're just using this stub.postmodels method and the postmodels, dot, the postmodels request 
to send in this list of models. So you get, this is just like the inputs. It can be sent a batch. You can set up multiple models at once. Um, but doing this, we define what our model structure is in that resources underscore PB2 model. We pass in the ID. We define the output info. So that's saying what the actual output is going to be. And we pass in the, our concepts there so it knows what it's trying to learn. What it's going to send back is just the post models response. So that's what the platform is going to be saying what has been completed in order to, um, in order to create your model. It, it'll contain any errors or any additional information that's necessary. So it's good to be able to return all of that. Um, now, the one thing I do want to highlight here is in the model object itself, under the output info field, you'll see this data field. And in that data field, there are the model concepts that we're passing in. Now, the way that, that I, I've done this here is instead of sort of manually putting in the concepts, uh, whereas uh, the typical approach would be you would want to like carefully choose the concepts that your model is interested in. But because we're using a predefined data set that already has the concepts already, uh, the concepts are already in the structure of the file system. In order to use that though, what we can do is we can actually just begin to query the, the application itself and get all the concepts back from it. So that's what we do in this method here, get app concepts. So in this get concept counts response or a request, it will just return a collection of all of the concepts that you are using in the application and a count of all the assets that have been uploaded and tagged with that, that concept. So what this method is doing is it's just getting that, that list of concepts. It's basically pulling out everything that is not the concept name and then just sending that into the, the next method. So to create the model. So you define what the concepts are uh, in order to create the model. Now, uh, the last step, it, it, or the second to last step in this process is actually training the model. So uh, what you'll see here is the first half of this training model method. Uh, and this is where a lot of the work is being done. So it's, uh, so there's a lot of code here to go over. Um, but really it might look a little complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. The design pattern is very similar for a lot of the Clarify API. So what you really need to do is just create this post model versions object, excuse me, um, submit this post model versions request with the model ID and it will actually begin to create a new version and in doing so we'll begin to train it. Okay, uh, so as you can see, as it goes through, it will do this post models versions response from that, we can get back the newly created version ID. So that's the version ID of this new model that we've created. And with that, we can begin to start monitoring the training pro uh, process. Like I said, um, the platform is asynchronous in its processing. So it's not going to just sort of immediately start processing whatever you sent out. Uh, it's gonna hold it in a, in a queue until resources are available. So in order for us to monitor our model and understand whether it's actually training or not, or see how it's training, uh, what we could do is we could set up this loop. So the loop is just a continuation of the, the previous slides code, but it's just the main loop that was using this built-in uh, function from the iter tools library count to just generate a count of iterations. And it will work essentially like uh, an infinite loop until it hits that condition, the, the else if condition down below. Now, uh, getting to understand this a little bit, what we're doing here is we're just getting the information from the model version. With that though, will come a status code, which tells us the current status of the training of the model. So in that if condition, we can see get model, get underscore model, underscore versions, underscore response, which is the response object we get from that get model version request. If we look in the model version field and under status and code, we can actually see what the current training status is. And there are two that we are really interested in in this condition. It's if the model is queued for training, that is it's waiting to actually be trained or it's currently being trained, which is the status underscore code underscore PB2 dot model queued for training and model training uh, respectively. Now, what you'll see right after that though is just a sleep condition and then a continuation. So the continue will just bring it to the next iteration in the loop. But what that sleep does, it just says to pause. So you're not just constantly hammering the API with a number of requests or continual requests. Now, 
the else if condition here, which is really what we're interested in, is when the model is fil uh, fully trained. So when the training has completed, it will return the status code dot model trained. And in doing so, we'll say your model's ready to go. He, and we'll return the version ID. Now with the model, the model ID, which tells us what that template is, what, what our model is, the version, which actually has the trained model in it, we can use that to then begin to get predictions back from the Clarify platform and this custom model that we've created. Now, the way that you do that is with, uh, it, once again, just directly through the API. And here I've written sort of the, the main script, uh, a main script that would be doing this prediction. And what, is, what it's doing, what it is doing is it's taking this, uh, this object X at the very top, so with open X, uh, that can be assumed to be just the, um, the, file, the file path to whatever the input image that you wanna test is. What you do is you then pass that in, the, the file bytes for that, just into that image object. And what you'll notice is the input, the resource, uh, the inputs here are very similar to the inputs that we were creating when we were first setting that up. However, because we're not associating a concept with them, because we're, we're, we're not associating a concept with them, because we're interested in what concept the platform thinks they are. Now from that, uh, once again, we just check the condition to make sure that it was successful. And down at the bottom, it will actually give you the predictions. Um, now, th what is returned is going to, what is returned from that method or all of the API calls will be protobuf objects. Um, and these messages can be kind of complex to read. Uh, they're a nested structure, very similar to like a dictionary or a hash table. Um, but, but in order to, to really use them, it's necessary to sort of dig into the, the actual protos and look at the objects that are being re returned. Uh, it, that being said though, and having a lot of experience working with this, I know that in this, out, this post model outputs response, there's going to be this outputs field, which is gonna correspond to each of your outputs. Once again, touching back on the batching, you can send in a batch of different images and get predictions for all of them at the same time. However, what we're focusing on here is just the single image. So it's only gonna return one output, but that, that outputs object is still, uh, still an iterable. So we'll just iterate over that. And then within each of those outputs, we'll actually see what the concept is. So this is the concept that the model has predicted for that input. And you can go through using this, this simple lip, loop uh, for concept in output.data.concepts and actually see what the concept name is. Now, the one thing that I did not touch on, and it's slightly related to predictions, is the evaluation of your models. Now, this is, this is something that is very necessary in the training, training portion, because you wanna make sure that your model is performant enough to actually meet your use case and the challenges that you're, you're trying to address. In order to do that though, uh, like I said before, Clarify provides very easy tools in order to quickly, quickly evaluate your models. And the structure for that is actually very similar for the model training. So I'm going to go back up to the training loop because the structure of the methods are actually exactly the same. The only difference is instead of doing this post model versions, what we're going to do is post model versions metrics evaluation or post model versions metrics. And what that will do is that actually creates that, that metrics object. And in order to do that, it needs to kick off a training uh, evaluation job. And in doing so, it gives you the full evaluations. So just like before, when we were waiting for the training to complete, we're going to be also waiting for this. Uh, we're going to be waiting for the evaluations to complete. And the status codes are more or less exactly the same. Um, really, I, I didn't include the evaluation code because it is largely just the, the same as the prediction code and, and likely could be combined even further. Um, but but the, the idea is still the same. You, the system is asynchronous. So you want to send out a request to create in this case, uh, an object of a model evaluation request. You want that created, it will queue on the Clarify platform, wait for it to be processed. And then once it's processed, we'll update that status and return the results to you. So that's what we're doing here. We're just checking the status over and over again until the evaluation is finished, then we're exiting and we're able to actually look at those results. Now, I understand that what I've covered here has really covered a lot of a lot of different topics. Everything is very sort of technical and very deep, but what I highly recommend is following along with the code at home. Uh, take your time, look through it. 
And then if there are any further questions, go to docs.clarify.com and likely every, all your questions will be explained in very great depth. Um, if you do still have questions though, uh, we at Clarify do have a, a community Slack channel and you're always welcome to join and reach out and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for letting me talk. And once again, my name is Christopher Messier. If there's any questions that you have about this, please feel free to reach out. Chris, really thank you for discussing with us how to get started with the Clarify API today. Uh, oh, thank big, you, Bob. Yeah, of course. And a big applause from our virtual audience. And we're going to see you at our next session. Thank you. Yes, you will. Take care, everyone.